All right. I made you a lemon and ginger tea, Phil. Do you like that one? I love it. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. And thank you for being back on the couch to do another Q&A video, which is proving very popular and you're back by popular demand. Well, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so it's thanks. good to be here. Is it? Are there lots of questions? Yeah, well, we have 10 questions. We did have a lot of questions today, but I've sort of narrowed it down to about 10 because we do tend to go on and on and on. So let's try to make this video snappy All right. and let's see how we go. Let's do it. All right. First question, guys. These questions are a combination from Instagram and also YouTube. So first one is from Hattitude and Hattitude asks, which moment did you think that he is the one and decided that you wanted to marry him? I'm still in my thirties and I'm scared of marriage. Well, you know, with Phil, I kind of just knew pretty soon, actually. Was there an actual moment? Was there a ping? Um, or did it happen over? I felt like it did happen over time, but saying that we got engaged after three months, but saying that I got to know you way before we went on our first date. So yeah. I knew that values and morals, everything was aligned, but I don't know when you're around Phil, it was just a feeling that I got like, I want this guy to be around for a really long time because you always made me laugh, you made me feel safe, and I never felt insecure around Phil. And I think you were the first man in my life that I felt really safe and secure with. I didn't have to worry or question, you know, our relationship. And I just knew that it was right. And you radiate goodness. So for me, I know, I know, it sounds sounds ridiculous. But um, I don't know, you just, it's very good vibe to be around. And I'm always laughing when I'm around you. Well, that's, that's lovely to hear. From my perspective, um, <laughs> Um, when you can meet somebody that makes you feel like you want to be better, a better version of you, mm -hmm. then that, when that moment happens, then yeah, that's, that's when they're the right one. It's pretty special. I remember. But I can understand, sorry, mm -hmm. okay, you're right. but I can understand why, um, the, the fear of, of marriage, because there's so much, um, pressure on people sometimes, yeah. the and symbol of marriage. Yeah, and the stats are up for divorce yeah. and, you know, we know so many people have got separated or divorced in the last couple of years and mm. I can see why you'd be scared of it because not many last anymore, you know, but don't be scared of it, it's all good. If it doesn't work, just get divorced and move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but also there are people that have been together for, for 30 years, yeah. you know. Yeah, and then they get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they, they actually never get married and they're still yeah. best friends and they still, yeah. you know. Don't worry about labels you know yeah. like I just think enjoy your life enjoy your partner I remember working at a really big company when I first started um, going out with you and I remember I'd be in the heat of it like it was a full-on high-pressure job and I'd see Phil's name come up on my phone and I just was like had this feeling of like oh it's gonna be okay mm. it's going to be okay whenever I saw your name flash up so I guess that was my moment of just like oh if he's in my life everything is gonna be okay yeah. you're a very grounding force for me Still am, hopefully. Uh. <laughs> okay, next question is from DLR Rich82. I love seeing photos and videos of you and Marco. Does Phil not enjoy writing as much as you, or is his interest mostly in playing guitars? Well, you've started writing, Marco, and you're really good at it, actually. You've got a natural ability with horses. Yeah, but Marco is a thoroughbred and a really well-trained horse. Yes, he's won lots of awards. He's and... really trained for the arena, yeah. and like dressage and show jumping. Mm -hmm. and, and so he's like, when you, when you ride him, he, he's so responsive. Yes. I grew up riding, you know, trail riding mm -hmm. um, as a kid, sort of, and it was all pretty rough and no one really knew what they were doing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but riding Marco's like... Um, it's like an art form, isn't oh, it? Oh, really? You actually have to have to learn yeah. yourself how to ride. So you don't need to train Marco, he's trained, I need to be trained. Yeah. And so like every little movement that you do on Marco means something to him, especially when he's in the arena. Mm -hmm. So um, you had a lesson, I gave you a lesson on Marco yeah. the other day and that was really, feels really good. But really the horse riding thing, it is my thing. It's yeah. my hobby. Phil has so many hobbies. He's the one that encouraged me to get some hobbies because I really had no hobbies before. Yeah. It was all about work. But Phil, I mean, Phil surfs, he plays guitar, but that's your profession. Um, and you jiu-jitsu and karate and, um, oh gosh, you do so much. Tinkering in your caravan. I've got this old caravan and um, I kind of wish that, I sort of hope that it never, it never gets ends. completed. <laughs> I, I wish and hope and pray that it gets completed because it's currently singing in our driveway. That's all right. 
it's it's not awesome. really that attractive but Phil loves it and this is the thing you've got to be supportive of each other's hobbies you know like I'm very yeah. grateful that Phil encourages me with horse riding and he was the one that was said just buy Marco like the opportunity came up and you're like do it just do it there's no question it makes you so happy go for it there's not many husbands I think that would encourage that because you know getting into the horse world it's very expensive but and I guess if you were going to put this into a, like a saying it would be discourage things that take you off your game and encourage things that keep you on your game oh. and definitely for for Ange um, if she goes a week without riding Marco then she starts to get sort of cranky cranky very cranky you know I know the other day I was in a quite a mood and Phil was like you know it's been two weeks that you haven't ridden Marco yeah. and I was like oh that's why I'm a bit edgy so as soon as I went for a ride I came back and I was a lot happier yeah. you know what they say Phil happy wife happy life it's true uh, yeah <laughs> and it sort of sounds cliche but you know um, Ange is a lot um, nicer to be around <laughs> when you've had to, been up the bush and you know yeah, ridden, fresh air yeah. And, yeah no it's really it's really good so yeah it's good to support each other in our own hobbies yeah. it's, it's good to have separate hobbies too totally yeah next question is from monsieur cat and it's pronounced monsieur cat oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> it's a silent air. Oh, okay good to know if offered the opportunity what types of other business ventures would you enter this is a great question. We could be here all night with me because I love entrepreneur. business. Oh, entrepreneur. I, I think I have a new business idea like every second day, right? Mm. And Phil sits there going, um, can you just kind of focus, please? It's hard to keep up. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. Okay, should I go first? Yeah, why not? Okay. I'll just sit back and... Enjoy your lemon. Lemon and gingery drink. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, get a cup of tea if you haven't already got one or a warm drink or a cocktail if you're in a warm part of the world. Yeah. Relax. Relax. Take a load <laughs> off. Enjoy. <laughs> um, okay. Business opportunities if I was offered. Property. I love property so much and I think we work really well together in properties because we, we've we done, you know, our old place up and we didn't sell it but we have rented it out and that was so much fun doing mm. that, like our bathroom and the kitchen. Mm. And... Um, I'd love to be house and apartment flippers, mm. like buy property that was like run down and then we could do it up because you're great with all the hard yakka and you're really great with all the, a lot of the hard work. You are. I don't, I don't love it, but I love you're so looking, good at it. I love looking back on it like, you know, afterwards and saying, wow, I did that. It's a sense of achievement. Yeah. Yeah. And I love making things look really pretty. I love design. I love interior design. Mm. I think in another life I would have been like a stylist or an interior designer. So yeah. I'd definitely love to do, get into property if the opportunity came up. Um, I'd also love to have my own, um, you know, clothing line, makeup line, PJs. Mm. And I'm kind of working on something around the sleepwear, loungewear range at the moment. I won't say too much about it, but it's definitely a dream of mine. I travel a lot and I love good sleepwear. There's nothing better than getting, you know, having a full day of work, coming home and putting on a beautiful pair of PJs mm. or sleepwear. Um, candles. I'd love to have my own candle range. And I have been thinking about this lately, actually. Mm. I've, got a, I've got a funny little idea. Watch this space. Watch this space because I buy so many candles, guys. So many candles. Mm. How many would I buy per week? You go through, yeah. You go through candles. Yeah, I love candles. They just make you feel so good and calm. Um, what else would I like to have? Uh, technology. I love technology. My dad is a tech, a technology geek. He invents things all the time. Um, so I'd like to do a little bit more in that space. Um, Apps. Yeah, apps, definitely, um, but just coming up with great technology ideas and having mm. a team that can just implement it straight away. Mm. You know, like I think having that at your disposal would be so great. This is like dream stuff, right? Like this isn't what I'm actually going to do, but she said if the opportunity came yeah. up. So there are a few things that I'd, I'd like to do. What about you? I guess just expanding on the things that I do in, in the entertainment business, mm -hmm. um, production, producing, music content but you do that i know i know but just expanding on it right because um the more that i've gotten involved with our business and content content creation for uh social media mm -hmm. um i've really found a lot of enjoyment and a lot of i'd love to be able to help people to do that mm -hmm. you know as well so i guess training training yeah ah. i guess training yeah. yeah um training in social media and content creation mm -hmm. and um but also, uh, <laughs> I'd love to have a, 
a music and performing arts academy. You do this already, Phil. You're just <laughs> talking again, about But again, expanding on do. it. Expanding on it and okay. a martial arts academy. And oh, all yeah. Sorts of You've things. got to do that, actually. Yeah. yeah, you will. I know you will. Yeah. Isn't it fo so funny? You, you're quite like um, realistic and I'm just like way out there. Actually, I was thinking about it before when you were talking and you're very product orientated and yes. I'm very service orientated. Yes. So I, was, I guess we make a pretty good team. Yeah, well, I guess our current businesses at the moment is very service orientated, but I'm heading in the direction of more products. Okay. Yeah, I love products. I love tangible things that I can package up, send out and it's done, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That was a good question. That I had fun question. with that. Thank you, Monsieur Cat. Monsieur Cat. Monsieur Cat. Monsieur, the silent end. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next lot of questions are from YouTube. Um, uh, Double M M M asks, "What kind of country estate do you plan to acquire?" Oh, country estate. Oh, so down to Navi. <laughs> well, because you've called it a country estate, I'm just going to let uh, Ange. Take the reins on Take that one. Take the reins. Did you see what I did there? I did see what you did there. <laughs> okay. Just so. go for it, Downton Abbey. Okay. All right. So our country estate will definitely include an amazing stables, like stables that are just pristine and so beautiful, so beautifully organised. I'll have all the saddles and a oh, great tack room, a wash room. I'll have a um, outdoor arena and maybe an indoor arena too, because it does get cold in Melbourne. So it'd be great to have an indoor arena. So it's going to have to have enough acreage to have a few horses. Yeah. Oh yeah, some... we're going to have about 20 or 30 acres and we're going to have some alpacas as well. They're just so, so cute. Although saying that, Marco, my horse, hates alpacas, so that's going to be interesting. I'm used. He'll get used to it. Um, definitely a pool. We love a nice big pool. Yeah. Um, a beautiful house which maybe kind of 60s inspired. Oh yeah. 60s inspired and I'd love like a, a rock wall, like a sandstone rock wall inside with a massive big roaring fireplace. Um, quite open plan. You can tell that I haven't thought about this much at all, have I? Um, yeah. <laughs> every night. I dream about it every night. And then we'll have an external house as well that, you know, so a family can come and stay and our friends with kids can come and stay but they can still have their privacy but then we all meet up by the pool or by the arena in the morning and have a great big breakfast together um maybe a little maybe some vineyards maybe a little winery on there as well and a lake and a lake not stocked, a dam a lake a lake stocked with trout yeah so phil can be fishing and i can just be like riding the horse around <sighs> lambs i'd like to have some little lambs so cute yum no, no. Um, maybe a tennis court as well, you know. Oh, gee, go, to, go for it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Helicopter pad. That's a great idea. <laughs> that is a great idea. Next question. <laughs> it's going to happen. I don't, you laugh at me, but it's, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen sooner than you think. Okay. Okay? Um, okay, next question. Also, again, from MM. Um, how many bags or shoes do you take on holidays? <laughs> Look, you know what? I want to say I'm a clever packer and a smart packer, but I'm not. I take no. way too many. I don't take too many shoes, maybe four or five pairs. No. That's that's not a lot when you've got, you know, sneakers and flat shoes and a couple of pairs of heels. But handbags, I do take quite a few. I'm, I'm trying to get better at this packing situation. I think, I think they meant bags like luggage. We usually take two big kind of... Um, cases oh we take one each over yeah. and we come back with two each on the way back <laughs> so. i'm really going to try on, a, on our next trip yeah. to underpack yeah well we always shop and buy things yeah, along yeah. the way so well, let's set the challenge i'm gonna i'm gonna try that maybe we could share a suitcase on the way over <gasps> Could you imagine? Yeah, we'll we're try. gonna try. try. We're gonna try. Well, we're going to. Um, well, the difficulty here is that we're going to New York and Hawaii on our next trip. So it's gonna be super cold when we go to New York. It's gonna be winter. It's gonna be snowing. I'm gonna see snow for the mm. first time. It's gonna be Christmas. Hey guys, if you're in New York around Christmas time, let's do so a meetup. Christmas meetup. Yes, yeah, a Christmas meetup. Sing meet carols up. together. Oh, go ice skating in New York together. <laughs> Central Park. Can we do that? If you guys are in New York and going to be in New York around Christmas time, please leave a message below. Let's go and have cocktails in New York at Christmas time with our subscribers. Can we do that? Sure. If anyone wants to come, let us know. We're going to make this happen. And then the difficulty is with this particular trip is Hawaii on the way back. It will be winter in Hawaii, but it's always warm there. So we don't have to be packing for super cold and then warm. But see, well. that's the thing is I always overpack for Hawaii. 
but I only ever wear a pair of board shorts and a couple of t-shirts. That's it. So, yeah. No. We've got to get more clever of this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Phil, question for you from MM. Mm -hmm. Who is your favourite musician? Ah. Now, I'm going to answer this two ways. Okay. All right. Two ways. So, the first answer will be like a fanboy answer. Mm -hmm. And that is... Can I guess who will be? Who? David Bowie. Yeah. And Prince. Pretty much. Yeah. And that and guy that. from Fleetwood Mac. And Lindsay Buckingham. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of lot of guys that I kind of worship like sure. that, you know. Sure, sure. Um, so they're my favourites. Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, from Led Zeppelin. You know, a lot of those kind of guys. But I got to a stage in my, and this is the second part of the answer, professionally, as a musician, I have to say that my favourite musician has to be me. Now, that sounds egotistical and full of myself, but think about it this way. Um, a while back I had to kind of, um, I was comparing myself and my abilities constantly to these legends like David Bowie and Prince and Jimi Hendrix and, and Jimmy Page and I never felt I could be as good as them, you know, and it was holding me back. And so I decided to stop being the fan and start, and start being, being the, the man. man. Yes, you right. say this. You say this quite a lot. Yeah, but it's true. But because... the reason I had to do that was, was was I had to put a value on my own skills, my own ability right. um, in in what I do. So so you know, um, Jimi Hendrix uh, isn't earning me, isn't getting me any gigs, isn't earning me any money for gigs. You know, but he might inspire you. He, he definitely inspire me, mm -hmm. and you know, I recently did a big Jimi Hendrix show up at this massive thing and totally that music you know helped me get that gig but I'm the guy that I have to put a value on and so I have to be I have to at least the very least like what I am delivering I love that and you know, you know what that's not an Australian kind of trait to have no and it comes from working overseas with musicians over there and, and having contacts with those guys over there yeah. so much competition and they really have to be promoting it and have the ability to promote I mean I love that you have a lot of mouths to feed you're in a lot of bands and you know you're um yeah you're you're doing great I, I love that as an yeah. opinion all right next question is from Rianne Arbuckle and she asks what do you do to prevent yourself from burning out well, that's an interesting question because the first thing you would think of is to have some time off mm. or have some time out, uh, have some downtime. Yeah. And yeah, that's true. It's good to catch up on rest. But what I'm finding with you, the way you've been um, preventing burnout is to not do the opposite, but you've like taken on a personal trainer. Yeah. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks, I've gone pretty hard with this new personal trainer. Because there's, I guess there's a couple of different types of burnout. There's um, physical burnout, you know, yeah. we're just physically tired, yeah. you know, early mornings and things. Mm -hmm. And then there's like emotional, kind of professional burnout. That's where I tend to burn out the most, emotionally, mentally, Mental not so much burnout. physical. I'm okay physically, but I think, um, yeah, when I feel mentally drained or emotionally drained, exercise, it's my best friend. So this personal trainer, he's so funny, Harry, I'm going to do some videos with Harry. Yeah. <laughs> he's, He's so hilarious. Um, I'm working out three or four times a week with him, and I've got to say, my mind and my mental capacity, it's I'm feeling really sharp at the mm. moment, and I feel like that has stopped me from burning out, because mm. I think when I'm starting to feel really tired mentally, go to the gym, get those endorphins pumping, good as gold again. Yeah. It's really, really good. And it's funny, like in our workplace as well, we've implemented a new little thing that we've been trialing this year, where we encourage every employee one day a month to have a mental health day. Now this doesn't come from their annual leave or anything like that. It's just a day for everyone to have a day off. So we pick the day in the month where they can go and do anything they want. I feel like I burn out sometimes um, emotionally and mentally if I'm not organized or if there's a lot, a lot of clutter around right. my workspace or at home, usually at home, because we're rarely at home. So it does get a bit unorganized sometimes mm. and it just sort of unsettles me. And so, mental health day, go and get your nails done, get your hair done, go and read a book. Like, when do you ever have time or the luxury to just go and read a book or mm. go to the country, have a glass of wine, organize yourself, mm. you come back and everyone is so refreshed and they feel great. The mm. mental days have been, have been really great for the team, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. awesome. Really, really I cool. need one. Yeah, you do actually. You haven't taken yours for quite a while. 
You need to take one. I'm going to. Take one next this week. I'm going to. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just taking time out for your, yeah. for your mental state. But like Phil said, I kind of do the opposite thing and I kind of go quite hard at the gym or go for a run or just get physical. Yeah. Yeah, that helps my mind. Yeah. What about you? I'm, I'm similar. I, I find that I, I, I get worse if I stop. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you do. It's like, better for you just to keep going. And I don't have any trouble sleeping, so um, I'm usually pretty good at, at um, catching up on sleep. Do you know what? That's what it is. Because I'm rubbish at sleeping, but when I'm working out physically, sleep I sleep so much better. So yeah. maybe it's not the exercise. Maybe it's because the exercise is making me physically exhausted. Yeah. And then I can sleep better. There you go. I just worked it out. <laughs> oh. Do these ones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>